Did you know that Audi has made a car that can physically transform? That Xiaomi has made a robotic dog that's powerful enough to backflip? Or that you can get a shoe that prevents you from ever falling over? Welcome to my biggest inventions video yet. From extraordinary to astronomical to out of this world. So number 25, let me ask you a question. Where is the water coming from here? It took me way longer than I'm going to admit to see it, but the answer is via a transparent tube in the middle of the stream. So, water comes up via the inside, goes down via the outside, giving the illusion of levitation. I really like this, but I can only give it a 2 out of 10 just because of how much greater things are about to get. But, I'd still tap that. For example, the cooker taps, which are more than just showpieces. Since 1992, this company has been making taps that, as well as being able to deliver normal room temperature water, can also in an instant dispense boiling water. And with their newer models, they're taking it even further. Providing you're willing to install this extra box, they can also deliver chilled water, which will taste like it's come straight from the fridge, or even sparkling water, literally, on tap. And if you're like me, and you just love tech like this that lets you spend less time waiting for things to happen, you're probably also gonna love Foldimate. It's a machine that you can feed your washed clothes into. It doesn't matter if they're simple jeans or complex button shirts. And literally, by the time you've grabbed your next item, they will already have been folded and placed in a pile for you. It all sounds very extra, but if you factor in that apparently the average person spends 85 days of their life folding clothes, and that one of these machines can mean your entire household never has to do it again, you can see how this investment starts to make sense. 3 out of 10. I don't think I've ever talked about this, but one of my favourite non-video games is actually Pool. So, I was a pretty happy guy when I saw that there is a company who's actually working on augmented reality pool. Using a projector that sits above the table, they've created a system that can overlay environments. It can simulate different animations when balls make contact. It can even show you the trajectory of the shot you're planning. I did initially think, well, that's a bit pointless because you'll always get it in. But think about how good a training tool that is. Think about how fast you could improve if you use this. I can't give it more than a 4 out of 10 though, just because the company hasn't posted an update about it in like two years, and so we've got no idea where the project is right now. Okay, I feel like there's a lot of people who love the idea of flying, but are just slightly put off by the fact that actually training to become a pilot costs over $100,000. Well, worry no more, because there is a company called Lyft who's building an entire fleet personal drones that they're saying people will be allowed to fly without any experience or any supervision. Each one uses no less than 18 separate batteries and 18 propellers. They have so many safety features that they can apparently land even if six of them stop working. And they're even built to be resistant to bird strikes. Do you call that a bird? This company sees the future as hundreds of thousands of air taxis getting people from A to B while completely avoiding traffic jams. I love the vision, but I'm only giving it a 4 out of 10 because they've got a hell of a lot of convincing to do before this passes regulation. Number 20, this is where we step things up a notch. I am of course talking about trash cans. This right here is the Titan Trash Compactor. It's a bin that once filled, instead of you needing to kind of like take out the bag, empty it, get a new one, can apparently compress the trash inside such that you can just carry on dumping stuff inside of it. I've actually been filling this one up over the last week to the point where I think most would consider that a fairly full bin. So let's see how well it works. That is kind of insane. As a very rough estimate, I would say that that has doubled the amount of stuff that I can fit into one bin bag, which is obviously not just good for me, but also the planet. As far as bin tech goes, this is, well, not rubbish. A joke. Five out of 10. And in a similar vein, Solubag has made a whole catalog of bags that you can use as many or as few times as you want to. And then when you're done, just stick them in hot water and they will dissolve. In just five minutes, there will be no trace of a bag, and the resultant liquid will be so safe that you can drink it. Which is kind of amazing when you think about how a normal plastic could well take 500 years to break down, and even then, you do not want to be drinking that. 
Or, in a similar vein, the company DB Breweries has created a fleet of machines that can take your used beer bottles and then, instead of just storing them to be emptied in landfill, can pulverize them into usable sand. This is then given to various different industrial companies who use sand to make things, thus reducing the amount of sand they'll need to take from our actual beaches. Important because, uh, not so fun fact, two thirds of the world's beaches are shrinking. Five out of 10. All right, so I'm yet to meet a person who has told me that they love watching adverts, but you can't knock the fact that they are what allow platforms like this to even function. Ads are gonna be a huge part of our society going forward. So I am actually kind of excited about how they might be about to get more interesting. Thanks to enormous high resolution panels that can be curved, companies are now starting to be able to develop ads that can factor in the curvature of these panels to create the perception of a moving three-dimensional image. We're seeing all sorts, a giant indoor aquarium, a huge cat that sits on top of buildings. <laughs> oh, you're a big cat too, darling. It's great for brands because they're gonna stand out. And as a viewer, I'm not exactly complaining either. And hey, if you're enjoying this video, then a sub to the channel would be show-stopping. Five out of 10. And related to this, did you watch the football? The Euro 2020s? If you did, you might have noticed these adverts going along the sides of the pitch. They don't seem like anything particularly novel on the face of it, but these are actually augmented reality ads. They're LED boards that are using something called virtual digital replacement technology, which requires a complete upgrade for all parts of the recording equipment can be treated as replaceable objects. So if I'm watching here in the UK, I'll see one ad on them. If you're watching out there in India, you're gonna see something completely different, even though this is a live event. It doesn't matter what angle they're being filmed from. It doesn't even matter if someone walks directly in front of them. It's really convincing. As for why, well, Money. This tech means that instead of just being able to sell one set of ads to one company, they can now offer that same advertising space to as many companies at once in every region, with the reassurance that these ads will be targeted to the viewers in that company's local market. A six out of 10 thinking right there. Okay, there are a lot of jobs around the world that require people to stand. It could be factories or shops or pharmacies. Sometimes there just isn't enough room for chairs. and. I really respect people who do these jobs because standing for sometimes eight continuous hours is not easy and can even cause a lot of long-term health issues. However, the Chairless Chair 2.0 could solve a lot of them. It's a passive exoskeleton, which enables you to sit. It doesn't matter where you are. It's got pads in just the right places such that it feels like a chair. And most importantly, it is built to counteract the long-term difficulties from standing by strengthening your thigh and back muscles or relieving pressure on the spine and knees. I probably only spend like 40 minutes standing a day, so <laughs> maybe not for me. But even then, I've still somehow managed to become the clumsiest person I know. You know, one time, my friends will never let me forget this, I managed to fall over while sitting down. How does that even happen? Regardless, the B shoes are kind of perfect for me. Each shoe has a motor controlled track on the underside, as well as a whole load of motion sensors. And what these do is they detect if the wearer is about to fall over and then use those motors to spread that person's feet such that they very quickly have such a wide base that they don't fall. The B shoes were primarily designed for the elderly who tend to fall often and whose falls are more likely to result in complications. It's a really worthwhile cause, but sadly it just looks like the concept didn't hit its funding target and is now up in the air. Unlike its users. Six out of 10. Okay, in today's world, we get through a lot of paper, whether it's bank statements or receipts or your local pizza place shoving 14 leaflets through your door each morning. The point is, Epson has come up with an incredible invention that allows you to recycle it. You feed all of your waste paper into this absolute unit of a machine and three processes occur. It breaks the paper down into individual fibers, stripping away all the ink in the process. It deposits what's left into a uniform layer, injecting a molecule that strengthens and whitens it. And then finally, it uses pressure to compress that layer into a paper of whatever thickness and size you want. Recycling paper this way uses 95% less water than traditional methods. It avoids all the trucks needed to transport paper from location to location. And it means that any sensitive documents you might have never need to leave your premises, even when you are done with them. Very easy six out of 10. 
You might have realised at this point that um, I'm a bit of a sucker for inventions that save the planet. And with this, simple is often better. Like, there is a company called Smartflower who've managed to build solar panels in such a way that they're not just pretty so that companies will buy them as a showpiece, but they will also rotate to make sure that the panels are always directly facing the sun, such that you always get the optimum level of energy conversion. It makes so much sense when you think about it. Right, between you and me, I love the idea of riding a motorbike, but I'm way too much of a wimp to go through with it. Honda may be about to change that with their self-balancing technology. They've created a little device that can sit above the front wheel, constantly assess its position to know how much the bike is tilting, and physically move the steering bar if it goes too far one way. Oh yeah, by the way, the bike can follow you to a parking spot and park itself. I'm not tempted. This is fine. And it's not just drivers. We also got to keep pedestrians safe. Well, it turns out Quebec has started creating crossings that, as soon as it's time to cross, turn into fences. Admittedly, not the most intricate technological marvel, but given that it will probably save people's lives, I can't give it less than a 6 out of 10. Is anyone else wondering, though, if you started walking on that a little bit too early, wouldn't it just catapult you onto the oncoming traffic? We'll take questions at the end. Let's talk about traffic, actually, because lots of cars on the road is often seen as a nuisance, right? However, a young entrepreneur from Pakistan has figured out how to benefit from it. This guy spent a fair amount of time at racetracks when he was younger, and when cars would fly past, he started paying attention to the wind that you'd feel from it. How it was more than just a welcome relief from the humidity, but also a resource that shouldn't be wasted. So, he developed a turbine that every single time a car passes will harness that wind to rotate and charge a battery that can then be used to power homes. And since then, big companies like Shell have come in and funded that idea into widespread adoption. 6 out of 10. But we can take this to another level. We're almost reaching intergalactic status here. Did you know that you can actually reserve a seat now? for a space capsule. It'll have 360 degree panoramic anti-glare windows, unlimited drinks, and a Wi-Fi connection apparently fast enough to be able to live stream the experience. It's effectively a pod attached to a massive balloon, and it's built to be launched from the ground, drift up out of the atmosphere, and then it features a splashdown cone at the bottom such that it can land safely in the sea. I probably won't be one of the first people to try it, but I do think it's kind of crazy that this is starting in just four years, and we are now talking about casual trips to space for leisure. Seven out of 10, with the slight caveat that it is $125,000 for a six hour flight. So, you know, try not to fall asleep. And equally alien, is Xiaomi's new Cyberdog. It's a robot that can follow you around like a real dog, move at speeds of up to 3.2 meters per second, and it's completely modular. So it's built with external attachments in mind, depending on how you want to specialize it. It's not the first of its kind. It's almost definitely a copy of the Spot Robot by Boston Dynamics, but it might well be the smartest. It's got a powerful chipset on board. It can respond to voice commands, and it can use face recognition to keep track of who's who. Am I the only one still waiting for a a cyber cat. Number six, I couldn't make a space themed video and not talk about Galaxy. Turns out Samsung might well be working on a rollable smartphone, currently being labeled as the Galaxy Z Slide. It's a very unusual bit of kit, but according to some filed patents, it will have a half display on the back alongside the cameras, and then that this display will stretch all the way around the front of the phone, and then it will actually keep going, with all the extra bits rolling up inside of the main body. And then with the tap of one button, it can unroll to reveal a tablet. It's a fascinating concept, not just because transforming phones are cooler than the current book-style foldable phones, but also just having a rollable screen means that you'll no longer have to worry about that crease going down the middle when extended. Seven out of 10. Right, so up until a few weeks ago, my dream car was probably a Tesla, or maybe a Lotus Evija, that thing is ridiculous, until Audi unveiled what can only be described as a car from the year 2050. It looks fairly normal on the face of it. Okay, I mean, not exactly normal, somewhat conventional. 
until you press this one button, and all of a sudden it activates full self-driving mode, the steering wheel disappears into the frame, and the car physically elongates itself to allow you more space to just chill and wait for it to take you somewhere. This is a concept car, so you can't just pop to Audi and order one, but I really like where their heads are at. Eight out of 10. And also, yet another vehicle that I'll probably never drive, La Moto Volante. Apologies to any French people I offended with that pronunciation, but this literally translates to the flying motorbike. On the land, it's nothing extraordinary. It's an electric bike that can go up to 100 kilometers on a charge. But then, thanks to four high-power turbines embedded in each wheel and tanks of kerosene, this thing can take off. Only for 10 minutes at a time, but look at it. I know it would never be allowed, but can you imagine getting stuck in traffic one time and just being like, nope, not today, and just overtaking Everon from above? Smartphones are getting pretty cool. And if there's one thing we know about them, it's that they're going to continue to evolve in ways that make them increasingly useful. And in that direction, it turns out that as well as rolling phones, Samsung's also filed patents for a camera system on rails. So by default, you'd basically have three cameras that sit in a straight line, pretty standard fare. But then at the press of a button, the main camera in the middle can be pulled down, which in turn will bring the two secondary cameras on the sides inwards to form a triangle. Okay, but where this actually starts becoming useful is that because you've moved each camera sensor to a new position, you could have a completely different set of lenses that will sit on top of them in those positions. Meaning that even though you only actually have three cameras, you have the capability of six different cameras. It might never get implemented because there are obvious complications to it, but it's just so cool to think that while we're speaking right now, this and so many other technologies like it are being trialed. Now, if you've been lucky enough to try virtual reality, you'll probably know just how immersive it can be, how you can very easily just forget that there is a real world around you. But of course, there are companies hard at work to take this immersion to the next level. Like Axis, who've created these tiny little nodes which you can place on each of your limbs to enable full body control. Like you can punch, you can kick, you can throw, you can do anything you want to, exactly how you would want to, in a virtual world. Or Cat VR, who've developed a 360 degree treadmill that allows you to run in any direction inside your game while actually staying in one spot in your bedroom. Or even, probably the most extra solution, how Japanese manufacturers achieved a very similar thing using moving robotic tiles that follow your every step. As impractical as it is, it's so cool to watch. Eight out of 10. And finally, just before number one, do remember that I have two other episodes in this invention series I will link them after this video. Okay, to really understand the final one and how it could literally change the entire fabric of our society, we need to understand that computers, at least the way we know them, are reaching their theoretical limits. To simplify a little bit, the chips that our current computers run on are made up of billions of transistors or switches. And these are what create the bits, the zero or one binary operations that are the base of what your computer runs on by starting and stopping the flow of electrons. However, as we keep trying to cram more transistors into successive generations of chips, the transistors themselves are getting so small that if they went much further, they wouldn't actually even be able to block the electrons. So the next era of computing is seen by a lot of people to be quantum computers, which instead of working in normal bits, where each is a zero or a one, they work in terms of qubits, where each qubit can be any proportion of both zero and one, and will therefore carry more information. Like if you have two normal bits in a normal computer, you've got four possible outcomes, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. But with a qubit, there are infinite. Also, because with quantum computers, the qubits are seen as an interlinked system, as opposed to lots of individual switches working on their own, these computers can approach problems in smarter ways, instead of the very methodical and inefficient one by one number crunching that current computers work with. I'm not gonna go into all the physics because it's stupidly complicated, but the belief is that this type of fluid computing will be able to solve problems that might have taken a typical machine till the end of time in a matter of minutes. 
the entire way that a computer works is being rethought here. This is seen as the equivalent of moving from candles to light bulbs, and it would completely change everything from financial modeling to security. Because like, instead of someone just needing to find out a binary key to hack into your stuff with a normal computer, they'd have to break quantum physics itself to do the same here. Fairly deserving of a 10 out of 10, methinks. All right, here's a modern day problem. You're upgrading phones. You package up and sell your old one. You get yourself a new one. You rip open the packaging, only to find you don't have a charger anymore. Well, the Anker Nano Pro is trying to be the one size fits all solution for that. And there's quite a lot of things I like about it. Like one, it's tiny. Something like 45% smaller than most equivalently powerful chargers. Two, it has Active Shield, or in other words, continuous temperature monitoring and automatic adjustments to the power output if it starts getting hot. And three, there's a bunch of two-tone color options. Glacier Blue, Cool Lavender, Arctic White, and Black Ice. They're pretty much made to match the colors of the iPhone 13 lineup. It is a 20 watt output, which is not their highest, but at the same time, considering that a brick half the size of my thumb can 50% charge an iPhone 13 in like 25 minutes, it is pretty cool. So check the link in the description to find out more. To check out my last video all about the Vivo X70 Pro Plus, that's here. Or for my full review of the iPhone 13 Pro, that's up here. My name is Aaron, this is Mr. Who's the Boss, and I'll catch you in the next one.